I'm gonna save some time here and skip the intro. Welcome to my list of the top 14 new features found in iOS 14. That was of course just released today at WWDC 2020. I have the first beta installed on my iPhone and yeah, without further ado, let's jump into them here. So the first major new feature is the addition of widgets. I did not expect this when I saw it. I was like, all right. <laughs> you know, I said that iOS 14 was probably gonna be about optimization, but boy was I wrong. But yeah, as you can see here, I already have two on my home screen, a giant weather one and one for stocks and how you add them is you just hold down on an app and then tap edit home screen and if you press the plus button right here you can go through the available widgets so there's a weather one a stock one series suggestions screen time and others battery i have one on my ipad pro which i'll show in my ipad os demo video but yeah let's just say i wanted to add a calendar widget i can tap on that and i could choose from a couple i'll choose the small one so then I can, you know, press add widget and it just adds it to my home screen just wherever, you know, in like the first available spot. And of course I can drag it around just like you would an app. And if I want to get rid of it, I can just press the minus button and remove. Um, so I can press done here. But yeah, here are my widgets once again. The top one here is actually a stackable one. So it's not only weather, but photos. I don't know why it's showing a picture of me and then it shows Siri app suggestions. So that's cool. And then of course this is just stocks once again, which should be showing, you know, like data. But once again, my internet connection is kind of weird. But yeah, I love this feature. This is something that's been an Android for years, obviously, but it's great that Apple finally realizes that people want information or data at a glance without actually opening an app. The next feature is the new app library. And Apple was saying like, oh yeah, like having a bunch of home screens is like kind of a bother. Wow, it took them like 10 years to realize that. But anyway, if you swipe all the way over to the right, you can see all of your apps organized in a nice categorized way. So we got entertainment, we got recently added, suggestions, whatever. So you can actually launch them from here, but also you can, you know, tap on these little groupings and it'll show you, you know, what are in these categories, which is pretty cool. And then of course you can search for what you want as well. And you get a little alphabetized list, which is really nice and something else that kind of comes with this feature is the ability to hide you know home screens if you don't want them for organization so of course I can tap on an app to edit the home screen here and if I click that I can actually tap right here and get rid of a home screens that I really don't want to reference so I can you know uncheck this and uncheck this and then press done and then here we are, I just have two home screens that I can get to the app library really, really quickly without having to swipe through multiple pages. The third feature is a redesigned Siri UI. No longer will it fill up your entire display as we're used to with previous iOS versions. When you actually toggle it now, it'll sort of appear like a notification. So I can say, hey Siri, what's the weather like right now? And it'll pop up once again like this. And as you can see here, we have this new Siri animation. So yeah, you can still see your UI or what you're doing and it doesn't obstruct everything. So that's nice. So I can be in an app, for example, you know, like Safari, I can be like, I don't know, searching the news, let's just say. And then maybe I just wanted to know something about stocks. So I can say, what's the Dow Jones looking like right now? And there you go. Once again, it's up by 153 points and then I can dismiss this and go about my day once again without having everything I'm doing obstructed in front of me. The next feature is another UI refinement here and this has to do with phone calls or incoming phone calls. So when iOS 13 in previous versions, your entire screen would be obstructed whether you were receiving a FaceTime call or a regular voice call. But in iOS 14, incoming phone calls now appear in a more compact notification or indicator, which is really nice because once again, when you're just using your phone, you don't want your entire display being taken up. And this is especially helpful for when you have like an annoying sibling or a person who's like incessantly calling you. You can just sort of dismiss this if you want. And of course, answer the phone call if you want to as well. Oh no, we got the microphone. Watch this, wait. Oh no! The fifth feature on my list is called App Clips. And although I can't demo it here, Apple's keynote really presents this nicely. Basically, Apple presented the dilemma like, oh, you wanna buy food or you wanna use some kind of smart service that uses an app, but you don't have that app installed and you can't download it in time. Basically, Apple will now allow you to scan like a little like barcode or something or open up an app clip, which is a small portion of an app and allow you to use some key features without downloading the entirety of it right then and there. So that should make, for example, using a smart scooter in a city really convenient without having you you know sit there waiting for the entire app to download so that's a nice feature and should alleviate some issues when you're in a situation like that the sixth feature on my list is Apple's new translate app which is pretty cool I did not expect this and you can use it offline I assume if you download the right files so I can have a conversation with myself in Spanish and English so hola me llamo no estoy muy bien and I can play my response in English hello my name is I'm not very well. Oh, so I thought my name was no, so that's good. But that's probably my pronunciation. I can say something in English, of course. I'm all right. I'm shooting a video on iOS 14 and I actually have to poop and it's stressing me out. 
and I can play my response in English or Spanish. Estoy bien. Estoy rodando un video en iOS 14 y tengo que cagar y me estresa. <laughs> and this is very true right now. Anyway, that is the Translate app, and you can also translate web pages in Safari, I might add. Oh no. Oh sh. The seventh feature is something new within iMessage. Now you can pin important people or conversations at the top of your app. So I can, for example, swipe right on my conversation with my mom and then press the pin button, also my dad. And I'll do it for just my immediate family here so I can contact them or just have immediate access to them without having to scroll down, for example. And I can see what they've sent me. So my mom sent me a text and my dad sent me a TikTok and my sister sent me nothing so far. So yeah, you can do that now. And this has been a feature in other apps, but still it's a nice addition in this operating system. The eighth feature is something else new within iMessage here. Now you can respond to individual group chat messages. So I can hold down on one here and then press the reply button. And as you can see here, it's like I'm replying just to this message and it'll show its own little thread. It won't like interrupt the group chat. You can just view individual replies to individual messages. And you can also now direct messages at particular people. I actually don't know how to do that, but Apple demoed that in their keynote. So those are two new features you can do in group chats now, which makes things more organized and honestly just more cohesive. And Apple also also said you can restrict group chat notifications only to when you are called out specifically, so that's pretty cool. The ninth feature is just security updates in general. Apple will now tell you if your password is insecure in Safari, it'll show you a little indication if your mic or camera is being used. And they also made a big deal about like having like nutritional fact sheets sort of of how apps will use your data. So Apple's making things more transparent and I like that they've always been about security and it's nice to see that they're still committed to it. The 10th feature on this list has to do with AirPods. You no longer have to manually switch to a different device. Your AirPods will now automatically connect to your iPhone if you switch to it or your iPad or your Mac. So this is a cross-platform feature that should have been around since day one. But anyway, I'm happy that Apple finally implemented that. And as an AirPods user, it's going to make my life easier and it's going to make me want to use these more now than ever. The next feature has to do with AirPods Pro specifically, and this is the integration of spatial audio, which is like fixing virtual speakers in virtual space. And it's really cool because they keep them fixed, whether you move your head or your phone using the accelerometers and such. So yeah, I think I've experienced it with like a YouTube video using like Dolby Atmos most or Dolby surround or whatever and it appears to work very well I don't know if I've experienced it officially but yeah this is a cool feature nonetheless and I'm happy that Apple has added an extra incentive to buy these and an extra feature to people who already have them like myself the 12th feature on my list is something else I can't necessarily demo but it's super cool Apple is now allowing you to add car keys to your Apple wallet so the first cars that will support this feature are the BMW 5 series the 2021 models so yeah you can now you know have your own car key or send somebody a temporary car key to have in their wallet so they can unlock your car and actually use it. And what's really cool is you can actually send them a custom profile, you know, restricting them from doing certain things. So let's just say you, you know, ask your daughter or your son to drive you somewhere or to take the car and do something. You can actually restrict what they can do with the particular key you send them. So that's a very cool feature and something that I think is very futuristic. The 13th feature on my list is something new within Apple Maps. Now you can get turn by turn navigations or directions when you're riding a bike and it'll show you, you know, bike paths and lanes and elevations and a bunch of other factors. So if you're big on riding your bike, whether you live in a city in America or if you're a European, I know Europeans are much bigger on riding bikes than we are in America. We drive cars, but anyway, you know, if you are big on riding bikes, this is huge and I'm happy for you. And I could see myself using this feature too if I'm in the situation where I need to ride a bike. And finally, feature number 14, CarPlay just got prettier. You can now set a picked wallpaper. You can't set your own, but there's a selection of them. And I'm happy about that because I use CarPlay all the time and I'm getting sick of the boring gray background. So I'm happy to see some color for once. So yeah, that is a small, you know, little aesthetic feature that Apple added. Is it groundbreaking, earth shattering? No, but it's something that will, you know, increase the quality of my CarPlay experience for sure. And that's about it on iOS 14 from me. Of course, consult other creators like everything Apple Pro who will probably have a list of 117,000 things you can do with this new operating system. But you know, 14 features was enough for me. And I hope that this video was concise and informative. And of course, leave a like, comment if you have any questions, suggestions, or opinions, and subscribe for more content like this. I will be doing a showcase or demo of iPad OS and the new Mac OS Big Sur. So stay tuned for that. And yeah, as always, I'm Noah, and I will catch you all in the next one.